Hello everyone, hi. Welcome back. My name is JD from uh, Studio 2105. Uh, obviously, I am here in the uh, control room of my Studio A, as usual. Welcome back to another episode of Mixstream. This is Mixstream episode 18. Wow, um, how time flies, you know. We've done like um, 18 episodes of Mixstream already. I think my weekly update Wednesday videos are like... Just recently, I did episode 39 plus all the other videos and such. I think like it's probably getting to about a hundred videos already. Okay, so right. Um, first of all, right, welcome. If you are new, if you are watching this, whether you're watching it live right now or you're watching this in the replay later, right, a warm welcome. Thank you very much for tuning in to this live stream. I still use the word tuning in, you know, because you know. Uh, old timer lah, right? <laughs> Getting already using the word tune in. Do we still tune into TV nowadays? Okay, right. So, um, Mixstream is a uh, weekly program. You know, I try to do this as weekly as often as possible. It's a program um, where I live stream a mixing session of a song. Uh, most of the time, uh, it's a, a local song, a local project which I'm working on, right? Uh, but sometimes, you know, I get some from overseas uh, as well. So what I do is I kind of walk you through the mixing process, my thought process, you know, my uh, workflow of how I um, mix a song from start to finish, okay? All right, so uh, tonight, right, as if you've been tuning earlier on, um, tonight's featured artist for this episode is Velvet Ado, okay? Velvet, all right, if the name will be very, very familiar, all right, especially for those of you who are fans of Academy Fantasia, for those of you who are um, perhaps uh, fans of S. Strange as well, okay? And also, obviously, if you are a Sabahan, okay? Right, so she is, right, uh, obviously um, a, f a f Fantastic and amazing singer. I've worked uh, with her and, um, several times already. And uh, not only that, right? She is also the wife to another good friend of mine, Rich from Estrange, the lead singer from Estrange, which of course, right, I've recorded and produced um, um, their, their albums before this. So very cool, right? So it seems like we have a little bit of a, you know, a, a Borneo Sabahan team going uh theme going on because either just two weeks ago uh, not two weeks ago last month two episodes ago i did a brand new single for marsha milan right her, her her new single right um guys you know this time i i am mixing the right song okay there's no mix up <laughs> between the different song that's an old joke like you have to watch the previous episodes okay so by the way very very quickly okay um the whole direct access this this the program that i run is called direct direct access mixed stream is this weekly live stream show so the whole idea of um, a mixed stream is that i want to showcase i want to support local music i want to show show you know folks out there if you watch when you're watching this some of the work that goes into the making of a song. So some of your favorite songs that you are there, you're wondering what are the processes. Actually, there's so many, many processes. It's, it's a very, very long and complicated process. A lot of man hours, a lot of hard work is put, goes into the creation of, you know, your favorite songs out there. So tonight, right, on Mixstream, this is just a small little slice. It's only one part of the entire production process, which is mixing okay so mixing takes um happens after the all the instruments and all the tracks have already been um recorded all the arrangements been done obviously right if you want to know more about the full right so i'm say going into this if you want to know more if you want to find out more if you want to you know learn more about the full details of how a song starts from front from start to finish right to end you can check out, right, on my YouTube channel, right here, the uh, Direct Access 1.0 Music Production Workshop Playlist, okay? So, that playlist, right, um, what I did was I did the workshop last year in 2020. It's an annual workshop. 
So what I do is I take a song and we have, uh, I have students and I show and I demonstrate the entire process from start to finish. Everything from the songwriting, the production, um, there's a lot of a classroom um, lectures and tutorials as well, hands-on demonstration, recording techniques. We record the full band, you know, uh, over a course of six weeks. We recorded the drums, the bass, the guitars, the vocals. Then we did mixing and finally mastering. So we want to, um, usually this course, if you want to attend in person, okay, uh, you have to pay, right? <laughs> it's it's you know you have to pay a, a fee to registration fee to to join the course, but right. Last year in twenty twenty, I filmed. You know, I got a cameras to record the uh, entire workshop, the content of it, and it's now up on my YouTube channel for free. So go ahead and check it out, lah. Okay, uh, I'll later in the replay, I'll put a link and arrow all the links in there. But just go to my YouTube channel and check it out. Okay. Now, uh, if you haven't done so, right, by the way, please do uh, click subscribe, become a subscriber today. It will really, really help. Uh, do leave a like as well if you uh, like watching this sort of uh, live stream videos, you know, mixing related, recording, mastering and all that. Feel free to do so, right? It will really, really help with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, by the way, live chat's going on over here. So if you are watching this right now, Please say hi, let me know right, where you're watching from, how you're doing, you know. Uh, I know here in Malaysia, we are now sadly in a second phase of MCO. Um, and um, I got a lot of things to talk about, but you know, I'm not going to talk about it right here in this live stream. Lah. Let's concentrate right, on mixing the song. But I hope that all of you are staying safe, staying happy, staying healthy, okay? And, uh, well... Without further ado, uh, remember, subscribe to the channel and live chat is there. If you have questions, if anything that you see or you hear, you have questions about it, all right, please do leave them in the comments in the chat, all right? Or if you're watching this later in the replay, leave them down in the comments, okay? I will be more than happy to, you know, read your feedback, read your comments and to answer your questions as well. So without further ado, let's head on down to the mix, okay? So, uh, this song was written, it was arranged, uh, music arrangement, everything was all done by Velvet herself. So, this is fantastic, you know, it's really, really amazing. You know, um, both Velvet and Rich, they are, you know, they are a, um, a music-making team, when, either whenever they uh, work together or even if they are working on their own separate projects. Amazing, amazing talent and, you know, one of the most, uh, my favourite singers to ever mix and to work on, uh, you know. So, without further ado, let's get on down to it, okay? So, this is, uh, this is um, Mimpi Inda. It's her brand new upcoming single. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot, okay? Speaking about, speaking about supporting your local artists, okay? One of the aspects of Mixstream is that if you are watching this, whether right now live or um, or later in the replay, and if you feel inclined that you want to support your local artists, okay, uh, you, uh, and you want to support the creation of more content like this on a channel, you can do so by becoming a patron. So, all right, what well, what is patrons, okay? Uh, patrons, you... Patrons help to support the channel financially by signing up for, it can either be a one-time um, one um, donation or it can be also a monthly subscription, okay? So how do you become a patron? Right, very easy. You head up down to the website up here, www.patreon.com slash studio2105. So if you sign up to become a patron, right, uh, you drop me a message, right, with the code mixstream 18 mixstream 18 so that I know that, right, your, um, your do donation, that your dedication is going to go, right, towards the featured artist, right? So in the past, we've also had charity live streams as well. So really, really appreciate it. If you want to do so, okay, uh, do head on down to the Patreon website. Uh, more details will be there. So you just look at it. There are different, different tiers as well. You know, if um, um, from the basic tiers, uh, come in, start for as low as one US dollar a month. That's about four ringgit, okay, uh, a month, all the way to VIP, right? VIP, VIP access are the best because 
right? The full package of VIP, you know, uh, uh, perks and privileges they get. First of all, one-on-one -on -one tutorial mentoring sessions with me, okay? All right, so we do it usually either uh, via via Zoom or Skype or whatever whatever software you have, and we, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one, um, um, session. And uh, not only that, uh, get exclusive behind-the-scenes content, Patrons, right? You know, uh, always get the what we call the um, patron votes. You know, they get exclusive uh, voting rights. So whenever I want to make decisions regarding videos or channel content, and all that, right? The patrons always get to uh, vote and give their ideas. But best of all, right, are discount codes, right? If you sign up, become a VIP patron, right? You get discounts. I give a discount of up to 20% on any of the studio services here at uh, at my studio lah, okay so now if you work that out okay just for ten dollars uh, you sign up to become a patron then you use that voucher to let's say for example right uh, book studio time uh, of course now you, you can't book studio time under MCO right or mixing or arrangement of production services you work it out lah right pandai pandai okay it's a great deal, super, super, super great deal just to sign up, right, to become a patron. So let's head on down, okay? I have rambled on long enough for almost 10 minutes already. Uh, you guys can must be, must be uh, eager to listen to it. So first things first, as usual, as you can see, these are all the tracks in the project. So you have the drums, um, a kick snare and a hi-hat and percussion. Uh, the hand percussion is like kind of a loop. It's it's more like a sh like a shaker. We will check it out and you'll listen to it. Some toms, and there are some loops that come in only on the very very end. Okay, just to build some dynamics. Check it out. It's an 808 bass. There's a guitar that plays m the most of the rhythm, uh, and pretty much quite a lot of synths. Right. So this is a very very um uh, contemporary, very very synth based uh, pop tune. And lead vocals and BVs, lots of sweet, sweet harmonies. Okay, some of them are unisons, right? And of course, these are all you know multiple layers, lah. So starting off first, whenever we want to mix, right? You always have to look at the big picture. So uh, we do so, all right, by just um, um balancing balancing it out and doing a rough mix first. Okay, so this process is what we call discovery and framing. Uh, I refer to it as discovery and framing. This is actually a term that uh, was coined by uh, Mixer Man, okay, uh, Eric Sarafin, okay. Uh, and basically what we do now is we want to sort of discover what's the song about? What do the parts tell, tell, tell us? You know, um, where, where the parts come in, where it come out what needs to be uh, emphasized, what needs to be put in the background. And uh, not only that, not only do we discover that, but, you know, it's we frame the entire thing as well. Uh, okay? So let's start. Let's take a listen to the uh, rough mix of Mimpi Inda and let's check it out, okay? So this is all rough with no EQ, no... some minimal effects because when I pull it up, I just put a little bit of a reverb on um, on the Velvet's vocals. So let's check it out, okay? Here we go. And uh, in the meantime, right, as usual, leave your leave your leave your comments in the chat, okay? Here we go. Vocal Okay, then 
time to get to the chorus. Awesome, right? Short and sweet song. It's really, really driven by the the vocals, right? Because the music arrangement is fairly simple. It's fairly sparse. You know, it's just a pretty much a uh, the same uh, drum pattern throughout the song. Then synths and everything just kind of support it, and the and the guitars play the main rhythm. But man, the 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 vocals, man, the vocals are the one that really drive. And she's an amazing singer. And uh, you know, as I I mentioned earlier, really, really one of the ones favorite ones to to uh, to work with because it's such a joy to mix a great vocal, you know. And um, you know, we always get the questions like um, very often I see these questions like, oh, how do I get my vocals to sound rich, to sound full, to sound clear, to sound powerful? Um, you know what, the old saying. You know, it rings true no matter what. It starts with the source, okay? It starts with the source. I mean, if if uh, if you want your uh, vocal to sound powerful, to sound clear, to sound, you know, uh, rich and full, it really starts with the vocalist itself. Um, there's only so much that you can do with plugins or technology. Uh, if, the vocal, if the vocalist is weak, if the vocalist has a very thin tone, you know, um, or, or or God forbid, you know, uh, not very good dynamics and a, and a very pitchy. There's only so much that um, technology and everything can do, right? I mean, um, uh, I've had the privilege to also record singers like uh, um, uh, Ernie Zakri. I've recorded singers like Aina. Um, Asmida, right? I can think of these these great three great female vocalists as well. You know the 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 younger ones. Uh, even I've recorded Jacqueline before, and again, you know, um, when people ask if if people would ask, wow, how do their vocals sound that great? To be frank, the instance I turn on the mic, turn up the gain, they step in front of the mic, already sounds awesome. You don't even have to do anything to it and here in this case in this instance right with velvet as well she's also another amazing singer lah, right uh, don't have to do anything much and it already sounds great okay now uh, as as a recording engineer when i'm in this kind of situation or even as a as a mixing engineer all i can hope to do is not to screw it up not to mess it up that's what i that's what i have to be very very careful okay so let's get down into it so First things first, okay, now this is actually my project and um, again, I'm not going to explain too much about the template and all that. I have a video on my YouTube channel that explains it, right, the, uh, the, my, my, um, my Cubase 
project template. So go and check it out, right, on the YouTube channel. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Now, first things first, very, very first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I want to set my initial levels. What do I mean by setting initial levels, okay? Gain staging is important and I'm not going to go into the debates of that, okay? Uh, I got a good quote. I read a very good quote um, the other day because on the internet and, you know, on all the, all the internet forums, uh, there's so much debate on the importance of gain staging, Right, um, but never mind. I'll sh I'll try and find and figure out and share the quote later. I would try and look for it because I posted it up on on my tweet. It was a quote from someone regarding that. But anyway, it's very important. So what I want to do is I want to set the initial levels so that I, you know, going to get a mix with good healthy levels yet with good enough headroom. All right, uh, headroom is there so that firstly you do not clip. We do not want to clip the master. And then secondly, we also do not want to end up with levels which are too low because of noise floor issues, okay? So how do we do that? For me, a very, very simple tip is to start with the kick drum. Well, 99.9% .9 of, of the time, we always start mixing with the kick drum anyway, right? So why not? This is a good place to start. And what I do, okay, is I uh, check to make sure that my kick drum will peak at about minus 12 dBFS, okay? Now, let me try and pull this over, this master channel over it. I'm running a dual, dual monitor setup, you might not see it. So this is my master channel. What I want to do is I want to see my kick drum um, peaking at about minus 12. Now, this is not a uh, fixed, uh, a must, it's not a rule, it is just a guideline. If you want to aim a little higher minus 10 is fine it's okay you want to aim a little lower it's also okay the important thing is that you set and you establish this uh initial level for you so that everything else if you sort of sort of balance it to that to the kick drum you're gonna be pretty safe right uh that you're gonna have a mix which has got good enough level okay so for me it's about minus 12 dbfs okay all right so let's start i'll, I'll play it this is already kind of balanced already to about minus 12, so let's check it out, okay? Just take a look. Here we go. It kind of peaks about minus 13, but sometimes it will peak a little bit higher. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, okay, so about minus 13. Let's bump it up by 1 dB lah. All right, so there we go, okay? Simple as that. Let's start with that. Okay. So once I've set that, that's my initial level done. Let's start with the kick drum. Now, uh, I have to save time. I've already like, done an insert of uh, on all the channels I have, first of all, an instance of virtual tape machine. So what I'm doing is I'm do using tape emulation and also console emulation plugins on every channel because what I want to do is to try and emulate the signal path as if I'm working on a analog console, okay? So first thing would be virtual tape machines. This is going so that it's going to as if the track was recorded on analog tape. Lah. Then next it goes into an instance of virtual mix track and in virtual mix track, I have first of all a virtual channel so this is an emulation of a channel on a, uh, an API console. I like the sound of the API. That's what I kind of prefer. And then moving on, this is an instance of FG73. This is the Neve 1073 preamp. So it's as if, again, right, we are trying to simulate the workflow. Tape machine, going into a channel API, and then going into a Neve 1073 preamp. Best of both worlds when right? you can mix, you know, an API and which is fairly clean sounding along with a little bit of color, a little bit of character from a Neve. Awesome. So first things first, okay, let's, uh, let's, uh, I'll, let me do, do a little high pass at 20. So let me just play the kick drum. Let's listen to it. Okay. Now, I don't feel like I really need to do that much to, to, to it because this is, first of all, it is already a sample. It's a program, uh, programmed, programmed kick. 
So just maybe a little bit to take out some of the um, boxiness, of, right? But this is a little bit, this is kind of a more of a vintage kind of a kick drum, so you don't want to scoop out too much either. Lah. So just a little bit. So about... About 315, 316 hertz. Okay, now let's look at another resonance. Okay, right. You can sort of, nowadays with most DAWs, they have the, uh, the RTA, the real-time analyzer. So sometimes... It does help nowadays, right? Uh, it's a lot easier to identify issues and identify problems. So you can see here at about 120, there's a little bit of a bump. At about 116 actually, all right? So just gonna do a very, very gentle cut there. Okay, and one more. This is just slightly high. I can hear that there's a little bit of that uh, resonance at about 140 hertz. So just this one will be a tiny, a small notch. Okay, now nothing much to add. I love to add. Um, let's put in first of all. I think what I need to do. I I know. Well, uh, maybe just have it a slightly punchier. And what I'm gonna do is gonna add the. Uh, Dang, the classic good old plugin, the Transient Designer by SPL, okay? Uh, firstly, let's try and solo. This is the this is the Transient Designer Plus. The, tr the, the Plus version of the uh, Transient Designer has the uh, sidechain filter. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to kind of check out and sort of see where that side chain, the frequency which I want to establish. I just want to give it a little bit more bite, a little bit more punch to that. Okay, so that's kind of where the attack is, right? That's kind of where the attack is. So let's bring up the attack a little bit. I pass. Okay. Funny thing is that it's also bringing up another kind of a resonance up here. At about 2.3k. Well, but you see, everything affects everything, right? So we set something, we, 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 we don't forget that, right? Everything affects everything. You do one process, it would usually tend to affect something else. So that's the kick drum, a bit of transient designer. Uh, and uh, let's play around and see in what if I drive the input of the uh, um, 1073 a little bit more, yeah? Okay, let's go back to that. Oh, you can see that it starts to saturate a little bit. Okay, no, I don't want too much of that, okay? I want to keep it fairly clean. So let's keep it at about 60. Okay, now, so uh, I'm not going to add a lot of compression because firstly, you know, running it through the tape um, emulation and, and the preamp uh, emulation already gives, you know, a little bit of a very subtle amount of compression to it. So not going to do too much, but what I will do, right, and if you watch my other mixed streams as well, you see I very rarely, rarely ever put compression on uh, my individual mics, okay? Uh, but what I will do is I will put in the uh, limiter. So the one that I love to use is called Boz from Boz Labs. It's this little clipper. This is just to kind of clip a tiny touch of the, the, the transient, okay? Just a little bit, all right? 
Alright, not only that because I've already because I brought the um, attack a little bit further forward with the transient designer, I just want to make sure that it doesn't uh, become too spiky and too peaky. Lah, okay, so this would help a little bit. All right, see, I just want to on just want to clip only on the very, very loudest bits. Okay, let's move on. All right. Okay, as usual, hey, uh, I see there's more people coming on already. Hi there, thanks for joining, okay? Uh, if you are watching this right now, please do say hi. Say hi in the chat, in the comments, and, and let me know uh, uh, where you're watching this from, how's everything going, okay? If you have any questions, any comments, please leave them in the chat, okay? Chat is over this side, okay? Or if you're watching on the phone, maybe it's somewhere down, down below, okay? Come on, I would love to hear from you, okay? This is meant to be an interactive session. Uh, learning is a two-way street, as we, as, uh, as, as, uh, as people say, okay? Okay, let's add on. So that's kick drum. It's very simple. Now, I don't want to overdo it because, first of all, we have to listen and take into account the rest of the instruments to put it in context first. You overdo, you make it super... Um, you, you sculpt the EQ and, and everything without knowing how it's it's going to relate to the rest of the tracks, it's also pointless, okay? So let's move on with the snare drum, okay. Okay, very cool. Okay, let's solo on the snare first. We bring the screen over here. Right, just high pass. Okay, right, let's listen to it. It's a bit of a tiny, tiny build up there, but. It doesn't really bother to be too much, like actually. Let's, so let's just leave it. Okay, now there's one thing up here. Great. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, this is this snare drum part, right? Um, has a. Uh, Okay, hang on a second. Now let me adjust my mic for a bit. Let me mute it so it doesn't uh, sound like a big bump over when you're listening. There we go. It's a little bit, hopefully it's a little bit better right now because it's now starting to droop a little bit. Um, this is, you know, it's it's a snare drum that has got obviously the back beat on the down beats, but it's also got a lot of ghost notes. But what I want to do is I want to try and bring up those ghost notes a little bit more. And what we're going to use is MV2, all right, Waves MV2, and bring up the low level stuff. So, you know, all the uh, ghost notes get accent gets accentuated a little bit more, all right? Let's bring it up. Okay, it's also bringing up some of the ringing. So let's see what we can deal with. About 560, I don't really like that. Okay, very good. Okay, now I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Okay, so I've got MV2 in place there. I'm just going to add in the a bit of the FGA, right? This is the uh, API EQ. Let's put the filter on. So bring it about 200 hertz. Just give it a bit more, a bit more fatness on the bottom. Maybe 100. Let's see how it does when it's 100. Oh, it's better. It's better at 100 actually. 200 sounds a bit boxy, but hmm. Let's see. Let's let's do this. Okay. 
Okay, let me bypass that. We take out 400 instead. Right, very, very cool. Okay, so it gives it a little bit more body, but at the same time, I want to kind of scoop out 400 a little bit, right? So it takes away some of that uh, ugly, boxy mid range, lower mid, lower mid range there. Another thing that I've recently used a lot on Snare is the Black Box Analog Design HD2. This is amazing, man. This is a you know, like a kind of a, uh, a, a, a saturator, so to speak. So let's play around with this guy. Okay, let's go and see. That definitely adds some bit of bite to it. Let me compensate the output down. Here we go. Thirty percent. Ooh, that's adding that that fatness to it, which which I like. Bypass. Okay, must compensate with the output. Oh, that's weird. When I bypass this, I think it bypasses the processing, but the output also gets bypassed, so that's why it sounds softer. I think it bypasses here. That's more accurate. A little bit more. Let me try. Let's go with its saturation frequency high. Nah. Oh, it's bypassed. Nope. I think flat sounds the best, right? Because I also do want to saturate a little bit of the the the, the low end as well as the, uh, the highs. Because if I set it on a high, it skews it, right? It tilts the EQ more towards the, uh, the, the frequency response, more towards the highs, and vice versa. So flat kind of, you know, treats everything a little bit more evenly. Lah. So let's listen in context with the kick drum. Very important, okay? Okay, let's just leave, put it, leave it at that first. We will see how it goes. Okay, uh, we will see how much, uh, how to say, how to speak. We will see how it goes once we've included all the other elements. Let's move on quickly. Hi hat percussion. Okay, very simple, very straightforward. Let's filter out all of that. Now, what I want to do with this guy is I want to add a little bit of excitement to it so uh, let's try this out okay let's put in a tiny touch of um let's use let's just put a little bit of eq on it let's go with same thing the fga okay and this is where the uh, shaker and hi-hat comes in I don't mind it being all together in one loop. That's perfectly fine. In fact, like since we are there, I'm going to put in MV2 as well. MV2 will help to bring out a lot, a little bit more of the detail from the shaker also, because that's adding all that 16th note uh, energy and that motion to it. You see? Okay, let's bring it up. Yeah, okay. So to compensate the output. Okay, let's check it out. Great, okay. See? So MV2, right? Uh, as I'll explain, uh, I've explained many, many times before. Right, it's a combination of um, it's it's a it's quite interesting. Okay, 
Let me adjust this mic again. It's kind of drooping one more time. Okay, a little bit better. A little bit better, I hope. So MV2 is a combination of several different things. It's like it's like expansion, it's like parallel processing. What it does, it's got two controls, right? Two main controls over here. Well, three actually, but the two main ones is low level, low level compression and high level compression. High level compression is compression as we know it, like, as we are familiar with. What it does, it, right, it just brings down right the, uh, the peaks and it, and it applies gain reduction. Low level, on the other hand, is like expansion. It's like parallel processing. What it does is that it actually brings up all the low level detail. Anything that's kind of, you know, sitting down a little bit below, it helps to lift it up. What it does, it increases the energy of, of, of the track. And it does so without affecting the transients. Obviously, this output here is to compensate, right? Because applying any of this thing, right, um, there will be some makeup gain to it. It, uh, it makes it makes it louder. So we need to um, turn the output down so that we're listening back and checking, right, on equal volume. So the hat percussion loop here that's going on, as you can see in the verses, it's mostly the hi hat. But when you get to the chorus the uh, percussion comes in okay is it so or is it coming on the second verse here actually second verse and also on the final chorus so this is again a great arrangement tool um all right 60 percent as I've, I've said it before many many times all right a good proportion you know like 60 percent 70 percent 60 or 70 percent of your mix comes from two things your arrangement and your choice of sounds. So here, this is a great arrangement tool, right? Um, you know, adding in that shakers, right? Uh, over in the second part of the verse, just to lift it up dynamically. So, right, this is a great arrangement tool. I will probably want to give it a little bit more of air, a little bit more space. Interesting. Let's try and let's try and play around with maybe a little delay. So this is an this is from Baby Audio. This is actually, I don't know whether is it still available for free. This is called the Baby Come Back. <laughs> they have very, very cute ways of uh, uh, naming their plugins. Uh, it's a brand new company. It's a new company. So this is actually a delay. So let's check it out and see what it does, okay? So this will be a wide delay. Interesting. Let's give it, let it ping pong. Ooh, okay, it's, it's giving it that kind of width. Okay, you can sort of hear it there, right? It's adding a little bit of that width to it. Very subtle though. Okay, let's go back again to this. See, on the left, it's giving that Let's bring it down a little bit Maybe about 50 Okay So let's leave it at that first Let's see how it goes So, not only is it So the hi-hat is a little bit more interesting now You get that little kind of a bouncy feeling going on in the hi-hats So when it comes to the drums, that's pretty much it, actually. Okay, there's actually toms here, so let's kind of work on this tom. Let's check it out. This is just a single tom, I think. Super simple, straightforward. That's it, man. I don't think I even need to EQ it. Let's check out maybe the back portion of this. I might even shave off some of the top end just to make it a little bit darker. Oh, this one. Okay. 
Now, I feel like I need to give the drums a bit of space. So all the drums are being actually routed to a group here, into a drum group. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to plunk it into a bit of reverb, but maybe first thing first, let me turn on this. Let's let's okay before I put on the reverb. Let's let's uh, let me do this first. Now I mentioned that I seldom compress the individual drum tracks, but very often what I will do is I will actually do I do uh, apply the compression across the entire drum bus over here. So my favorite right is the API twenty five hundred, but I feel like I want to experiment with something a little bit different because this is brand new from um, Plugin Alliance, and this is the um, the let's look for it the Lindell 50 channel this is brand new so let's try it out oh activation required okay okay let's activate it okay first time I'm actually using it I'm online activate contacting server voila All right so this is a brand new addition right uh, to from a, from a, a Linden audio is part of the plugin lines you can look at it, you can pretty much guess what it is, right? This is a channel strip of an API and it's like, it's a dream come true, man. <laughs> you know, what? this is exactly what, what, what I wanted. So I'll try and duplicate this, these settings over here and let's see how it sounds, okay? Uh, so I will want my attack to be fast. As you can see, this is the, you know, this is the, uh, the input um, preamp of the API, like a, can't remember what is the three one two. Oh, it should be a five one two, I think. Then the uh, API EQ, the five fifty. This is the uh, um, the compressor, the gate, and the finally the uh, the 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 fader. Okay, so let me try and sort of um, let's go. Let's go with the same setting that I usually have. My release should be uh, variable release, right? Fifty. Favorable, okay. Oh no, this is, hmm, what is this? Okay, this is release, or oh, this is the link. What link is this? <laughs> okay, so release should be as fast as possible, yeah, okay. Slow as possible, fast as possible, not slow, slow pula, okay. And let's try and check it out and see how it sounds. Let's add a bit of bite to it and see what, how how does it sound. Interesting. Let's go with five K. Nice. I like it that it's continuously variable, not like the uh, API. I mean, it's slightly different. The API is actually a step control. You can only go in increments of 2, two, two dB, okay? But they've made it and they've modeled it in such a way that this is only that you can. How do we, you know, that's that's the annoying part. How do we uh, key in the value? Okay, about 3 dB just now, right? Oh, 3.04, close enough. Okay, and, okay, about 100 hertz, let's bring this up, let's check it out and see. Nice! Just very subtle, maybe about 2.5, let's bypass this. Oh, definitely adds a little bit of uh, girth to it. But what about the compressor? Let's check it out. Very interesting, okay? Okay, okay we should be going for, first of all, it should be a... Uh, Let's go with, so soft, oh, okay, right. And, uh, oh, it's different, actually, different, interesting, very interesting. Let's try to play around with. S 
soft ni. I like the soft better. What is NIV? Yeah, I've never, I've not looked at the manual for this yet, so I'm just basing on what what I hear lah. Uh, leave it off. Ooh, okay, so this is the feedback circuit. Okay, let's definitely have that on then, right? Because when you turn it off, it sucks it real too much. Interesting, okay? I'll definitely need to spend a little bit more time, but I kind of like what it is that it's got all of this inside one single channel strip. Okay, let's move on. Uh, as I said, I want to add a little bit of ambience. So I'm going to do that by just <clears throat> taking a... Let's just take a... Uh, which one should we go for? Let's go with the reverence, because this is what I usually use for drums anyway. So reverence here, this is the... Um, convolution reverb that comes stock bundle with Cubase. So let's check it out. Uh, I'm gonna go, let's browse for something more of a like a recording studio, like a little room. LA Studio is pretty good already, but let's go with something else. Let's go with a well, large Viennese Hall, Martial Arts Stadium. Let's go with this one, Music Academy. Let's just try it. Okay, so this is more like a rehearsal room, probably. So let's check it out and see. <clears throat> let's add a little bit of that. I just want to give it a bit of space, that's all. Probably back off a little bit on the pento though. Nice. Just to give it a touch, tiny touch of space to the to the to the drums. So yeah, that's it. Let's move on now. Quickly, let's go to the bass. So the bass is an 808. Let's balance it in. Right, okay. So this is going to be a little bit tricky. Well, 808s are always, not to say tricky, you know, but you have to know how to deal and handle it. Lah. So very, very first thing that I kind of want to do is uh, let's let's do a little high pass at 20. But 808s, you know, is pretty much a, actually just a sine wave. So the problem is that sometimes, you know, uh, it's going to be hard to hear and to hear the 808 bass when you're listening to over smaller speaker systems, you know, or God forbid, <laughs> even uh, maybe uh, uh, mobile devices, right? Because they just don't, can't reproduce. So we, what we need to do is, one, to, we need to, you know, introduce some of the upper harmonics because this is actually a psychoacoustic phenomenon. If let's say you have a bass frequency, a bass note playing at about 50 hertz, but your speaker response from let's say a handphone uh, you know, cannot reproduce anything below 100 hertz, then how in theory can you actually listen and hear the note 50 hertz, you know, or let's say 40 hertz, right? That is kind of a equivalent to the low E on the on a bass guitar, right? On a on a on a on a bass guitar. 41 hertz uh, to be more precise. How do we hear that note, even though the speaker or, 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 or device cannot physically reproduce it? We can hear it based on the upper harmonic content. So it's a, it's a, it's a phenomenon. Our ears can sort of um, perceive frequencies which are lower than what's being created or produced by, by, a, by a speaker just based on the uh, f uh, upper harmonic content. So if you have, um, you know, 40, if you multiply it, the octave would be 80 hertz. 
and then we multiply that by uh, another two that will be about 160 so you have if you have a good deal of 160 and then you times two again 320 if you have those frequencies right 160 320 somehow the ear can actually within your not your ear your brain actually can perceive and hear that low uh, e note even though it's not there so what we're going to try to do with this is to try to increase and bring up some of the harmonics uh, in the, uh, the bass one of the easiest ways to do it is by distortion or saturation so what i'm going to do and this is where the beauty of you right the preamp section such as this the 1073 comes in it's really really great at you know overdriving driving and saturating so let's just play around with it and see let's solo the bass 808 Let's pump it up. See, automatically, you can start hearing right a little bit more of the upper harmonics. Okay, bypass. See, this is more of a, like a very, very sine wave. In fact, let's go back to the tape. Let's go back to the tape first and let's check it out. Let me try and saturate this on tape. Oh, oh, I like that. I like that. I like that very, very much. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's bypass both and see. Okay, huge difference, right? Between what's between what is audible and not. And if you look at the meter levels, okay, when I bypass it, okay, I'm gonna bypass both the tape, um, uh, virtual tape machines, and also the uh, virtual channel and. Um, FG73 Pre if you look at the meters it's actually slightly less so a little softer because what it does it has kind of compressed the fundamental a little bit but at the same time it's brought up some of the harmonics so meter wise it still measures the same but over you know the, the a lot more of the harmonic content is being brought up yeah, as you can see, this little the harmonics here are a little bit more stronger now, and so that makes it, it makes the bass right a little bit more clear, a little bit more audible, especially on smaller speaker systems. Uh. very cool, very very cool. Okay, so let's pump it up a little bit more. Let's drive it. Let's go all the way, man. Let let it saturate. Let's listen in context. Now, I uh, have to be careful. I think I experienced this, I think, on another um, mix stream, which I did previously on, I think, Kuzu's song, uh, Irama del Lago, which is out, by the way. It's already been released. Uh, where I did the same thing. It was also an 808 bass. But um, got to be careful with saturation and distortion. Like you can always go a little bit too far, make it sound too dirty. Sometimes you, you do want a more clean bass, so to speak. Okay, so let's check it out. Nice, okay. I think it sits really fine. Okay, and you see well, what I've done with the EQ with the kick is I already made a little bit of room for that. Uh, the upper harmonics of the uh, 808 to come out because without this right this would may clash a little bit right it may eat up the some of the the space that's being that's being now occupied by the harmonics of the 808 so very very cool okay I'm loving it okay now let's move on the bass right I'm actually sending the bass to actually a group so again you right, you can check out how my templates are so in this little group here what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, firstly, an instance of C4. Wave C4 is a multiband compressor. This is just here to control the low, super, super low lows. Okay, just to kind of bring it, uh, make sure that it's even. Lah, all right. It's pretty even now, actually, because this is, first of all, again, it's a programmed bass. So not like a live player where the dynamics might sometimes vary quite, uh, quite a lot. Program is usually very, very, very even. So let's check it out and see. Okay. 
Yeah, it's perfect. It's just to even it out just by a tiny, tiny touch, okay? Okay, solo it a little bit. So... Okay, so, okay, now it has brought up some of these upper harmonics. So, do we need to... Let's just see, all right? Usually what I use with Surfer EQ, especially with um, um, elect electric bass, bass guitar and all that, is that I use it to maybe take out some of the upper harmonics which I don't want because sometimes maybe it's a fifth or a third or sometimes a seventh, you know, those odd harmonics. It kind of clashes. I'm not saying clash. Uh, it sometimes will kind of um, um, overshadow. So this it, 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 I, I use Surfer EQ too to give room to that. So let's try it and see. Do we need it or not? Huh? Let's try the fifth harmonic. You see the seventh. Let's take this out and see. Let's compare. Let's go with fifth. It's very subtle, but it does clean it up a little bit. So let's just set it at that first, like, okay? Usually, it's I have it very subtle anyway. Nice. I'm hearing one note kind of ringing from the bass, though. About 430, 440. It's kinda there all the time. Again, these are most likely the byproducts of the the um tape and also the uh, preamp saturation, right? So we have to be always be mindful of all that. Lah. Okay, that's great. Moving on. One of my favorites on bass, so let's check it out again. Let's apply this. Uh, this is gonna be more for the tone. Rather than uh, rather than actual dynamic control, because I think dynamics are really, really, really cool. I just want to drive it in and see. Ooh, it's giving a bit of a fuzzy edge to it, which can be interesting. Let's bring it down. Interesting. See, it's adding a little bit. This is the uh, the revision A, the eleven seventy six revision A, which is the uh, kind of an older model. So because it's an older model, it's a little bit noisier. It's a little bit more distortion. But some people like it because of the added distortion. It adds a little bit more character la, compared with the uh, the revision E, revision D onwards. The blackface eleven seventy six, which are a lot cleaner. Okay, let's check it out and see. So it's you see it's adding that little bit of that. Just a bit more. Okay. Now again, let's see. I could be doing too much, but I don't know until everything is in. So let's just remember the, the old adage I say, set and don't forget, okay? Set but don't forget. Okay. Now, do I need the bass rider? Let's just put it in any way, just to give a little bit more fine tune. No, I don't think so. I don't think I need bass rider on this. Okay, let's just let's just not not have let's not have this. Let's switch it off. But MV two. Okay, I used MV two earlier. I showed you a couple of times already. But it's one of the best tools that you can use on bass guitar, okay? On any sort of bass. So this will, again, bring up a little bit more of the low end. That's why I want to do. And let's see. This will probably bring up some of the harmonics even more. Again, you want to be careful not to overdo it. I think I need to be a little more subtle in this one, okay? 
bypass. Bring it down about 2 dB. Sweet, okay. And I think I'm good, right? We're good with the bass. Okay, so again, don't fixate too long on, on one thing, especially when you don't have vocals, you don't have the rest of the elements. Let's move on, okay? Let's move on really quickly. So next thing I want to do is let's bring in the rhythmic uh, elements. So this will be a guitar. It's like a very ambient, spacey guitar. Again, it doesn't seem like I need to do much, you know? Maybe just a little bit of uh, EQ. Okay, let's put in the FG2A, just compress it a little bit. Where is the FG2? Okay, need to compensate gain. Just make it a little bit more thick. Now I'll pull in the EQ after. You know, sometimes I EQ before. Most of the time I will EQ before, but in this case, it sound really sounds great. I just want to do a little bit of EQ after that. So just gonna take out some of the bottom end. Let's go with a 12 dB per octave. Okay, right. Right, so I'm going to use TDR Nova as a dynamic EQ just to kind of spot and just take out any sort of unwanted frequencies. Like, okay, out TDR Nova. So I'm hearing this. Let's solo this band. Two K. Okay, let's unsolo it. Let's bring the threshold to about three. And another one here. This is what 1.1k. This one is, again, what I'm listening for is, you know, um, these are the inharmonic stuff. These are like uh, frequencies that are ringing that doesn't contribute to the actual sound of the guitar. So this is what I'm doing. Okay, so activate threshold. Same thing. Let's bring it to about three. Might have taken out a little bit more too much of the bottom. Let's go down to about 150. I think what I'm gonna do is let's be let me turn off this reverb here that's on the drum bus. You can see sometimes when I mix, I will jump back and forth, you know, between one uh, stage to another. So in this case, right, I'm gonna be jumping back and forth to uh, to a um, back to the drums again. So instead of putting the reverb here on the uh, drum bus, I think I, let's take it out. I have much better control if I just put it on the individual, okay? So let me go back again, all right? OK, 
kicking. In fact, I will add a little bit of reverb on the kick as well, right? Just a tiny bit. Okay, all right, you gotta EQ this reverb a little bit. At about 440. Okay, some to the hi hat. Okay, when the toms come in, also just a little bit. I think this, this is better, it gives me more control, okay? Because like for some of the, like the snare and all that, I want a little, like the snare and hi-hat, I want a little bit more reverb to it. Same goes with the tom. That's solo. Okay, and somewhere about 280, I think you need to just scoop out a little bit. There we go, that's better. Okay, and it's one more. Three hundred forty, three hundred fifty. I want to scoop out a little bit. Nice. There we go. Okay. So cool. That's kind of the main fundamental rhythm section going on already. The drums, the bass, and the uh, the guitar. So very, very quickly, all right, next thing, I'm gonna skip all the synths and the keyboards first, because what I want to do, make sure um, has focus, right, is the vocals. So what I want to do now is let's pull in the vocal. Okay, let's go to vocal, and I have my usual chain ready here. This is TDR Nova, first of all, right, as a dynamic EQ. The virtual tape machine, virtual mix rack, and uh, sibilance and R, R comp, okay? Let's bypass these two first. Let's disengage, so just listen to the vocal by itself. Okay, here we go. Let me turn off the effects on the group. Okay, let's turn it off. Sounds great already off the bat, you know. Okay, so let's roll off some of the bottom. About 130. Right, okay. Just has a little bit of peak, okay? Go back to the this part. Yeah, close to 4K. So, all right. Nova is a dynamic EQ. It's free, by the way. You can always down download it. Okay, you just check check out from TDR Nova. All right. So let's go into dynamic EQ. Let's go wide band ratio three, attack fastest, release fastest. Okay. Oh, fastest. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Let's listen one more 
tajamkanlah matamu karena ku tak mampu untuk bertemu buat ketika ini. About 1.2k as well, just a little bit. Ketika ini. Pejamkanlah matamu karena ku tak mampu untuk bersamamu buat ketika ini. Here we go. Ketika ini. That's all we need, okay? So a couple of other things I want to show you first of all. One thing in virtual mix rack, the other addition different uh, the difference here between what I normally that goes on in the other channels is that here instead of the FG73 I'm using the uh, um, virtual tube college collection the Hollywood module right uh, this one adds a little bit more because this is more of a tube right FG73 is more of a solid state uh, kind of a preamp so this is a tube preamp gay you know just adds a little bit more harmonics right makes it a little bit more fatter a little bit richer sounding but one thing which I love to do here is I have this here. This is FG Stress. This is a, the, uh, the model of the distressor. And what I'm doing here is I'm running it parallel. I'm using this as a parallel processor. I love using parallel process processing on, on the vocals. It's really, really one of the, you know, my favorite things, right? Especially on vocal. I, makes it makes whenever start when I first discovered and started using parallel processing on vocals, right? It just made everything so much easier, right? To getting vocals which were, you know, big up front and 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 solid. So let's just check it out, right? So this is running 5050. Let's check it out. Let's have the high pass on the detector. I just love the way vocals sound great already, just just like that. Let's go with the uh, harmonics. I think distortion 2 gets a little bit more a little bit a tiny bit of hair on the vocal okay which is really really cool let's go to the loud portion let's go to the last chorus and see how it goes first Listen in context, okay? Interesting, right? I think the social two uh, setting on this two just adds a little bit of that slight, slight adds a bit of the upper harmonics. Uh, now the loud parts here, uh, you can start to hear if you solo it. You can actually kind of hear the room a little bit, right? and this is again it's a byproduct when you compress, like, okay, with a lot of compression. But again, in context with the vocal, uh, we in context with the rest of the song, I think it shouldn't be an issue. Not an issue to me, right? To me, it's fine. It's perfectly okay. Alright. Okay. So next one that I have here, this is sibilance. This is a deesser. This is just to take off a little bit of the s's, right? Okay, once again, let's play on the loud part. Great, sounds awesome the way it is, okay? Okay, now one more thing here. This is an instance of 
Arcom. This is the Renaissance compressor. And what I'm going to do with this, this is just going to apply a tiny touch just to capture the loudest peaks. Okay, so let me just check and see. We should bring the threshold up a little bit more. Okay, I suspect when you get here, this will probably peak a little bit more. Let's, let's clip this gain down by about 2 dB. So you see, this is not doing, this is kind of doing about 1 dB of gain reduction. Obviously, some of the loudest parts at the back here, it goes up to about 1.2, 1 1.1, 1.5, 1 1.5 dB. But this is just to just catch the very, very peaks. So this is going to make sure, this is going to help later on so that the processing that follows doesn't, you know, doesn't have to work so hard. It's easier to put everything, all this processing in series so that it doesn't have to, you know, uh, you don't get too much of, uh, um, you don't get too much of that overly compressed sound. So it's still compressed, but, you know, it's not squashed because everything is being done in series and all of it's being, you know, a little bit of compression here, a little bit of compression there. So, you know, I'm finding that doing it in series, right, helps. Okay, and it's a very common uh, uh, method nowadays, okay? So, here we go, just listening again. We need to go grab a bit of water. Great, okay, cool, loving it. So, next thing that I'm gonna do, and uh, this is um, this is one of the things which you will always see me doing on all my mixes, is I'm gonna do a bit of the vocal thickening trick, okay? So, here we go. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this to an instance of Waves Doubler. So this is on my effects channel. Okay, let me just bring it up for you. So Waves Doubler, as the name implies, it's a doubler plugin. Okay, so you know it's kind of like a chorus, uh, detune, pitch, pitch shifting, and a, and a delay to it as well. So this is uh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a copy of the vocal. I'm sending the vocal to this plugin. So have a listen to how it sounds. Okay. See, wide, nice stereo chorus kind of a sound, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this. I'm going to export the vocal through this plugin. A total of four times each with slightly different pitch, pitch, uh, pitch, uh, um, detune values so that um, in the end, we're going to, I'm going to blend all this back in. So this process, all right, um, this trick is called the vocal thickening trick. And I've actually done a video on this. Again, it's on the YouTube channel. Okay, on check check it out, okay? Right, to find out more. So, for important thing, I have to turn off the stereo processing first of all. Okay, and let's go and bounce it. So, if this is a time, if you want to take the opportunity to go for a toilet break or something like that, this is the right time to go it. So, let's check. Okay, so this will be going into the doubler. And uh, let's make sure we name it correctly. Doubler plus three. Okay, but this is this is I call it plus three first of all. Sample rate forty four point one. Bit depth twenty four. Create audio track and insert to pool. So, okay, here's the first one. Let's export. Let me just go and see what else is happening. Okay. 
Right, as usual, thanks, Rick, for watching, and uh, hopefully all of you watching, whether wherever you are, that you are staying safe, that you're staying happy and healthy and, and, uh, and all that, okay? And uh, let's see, if you are in the chat, if you're watching this, please do say hi. Let me know that you are there, okay? If you have any questions, your comments, right, leave it in the chat section. If you haven't done so, if you're not subscribed yet, okay, please come and be a subscriber. Let's check it out. I'm getting some messages going on, man. Hang on a second here. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's see what's who else what's going on. First one is kind of going on and see. Hello. Right. Shizumaru. Okay. Hi. Shizumaru says that hi. I was about to go to bed actually. <laughs> Malaysian Bole. All right. Thank you for joining in, man. Don't go to bed yet. Come on. Check it out and uh, hang around. <laughs> Malaysian Bole, man. Thanks for joining in. Where are you? Where are you uh, watching from actually? And Shizumaru, is that is that your real name? Or is that kind of your your a account name? Okay, right. So I'm done with the first one. Let's move on to the second one. Second one, I'm gonna change this to minus six and plus six. Okay, so this is a little bit more slightly more detuned. And if you notice, right, I'm switching the order of the placement of where the positive and negative detuned values are. And there's a very good reason why you want to do that, okay? Okay, let me just set this off. Let me just start the export process first. This will be minus six. Now, the reason why, if you keep all your positive values to one side, is when you export all these, uh, the doubler tracks, right? What happens is that one side will sound sharp, one side will sound flat. Now, that is going to be weird. That will definitely sound weird, okay? So, right, doing it, alternating it between the left and right side, switching it back and forth will make sure that it's kind of evened out and balanced. Lah. So, whatever the, the pitch discrepancies will be, will be even, okay? So, this is the second one. We're going to do up to four times. Uh, next one will be plus 9, minus 9, and then the last one will be plus 12, uh, minus 12, and then plus 12. Okay. Let's see what the heck is going on, okay? Yeah, da, 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 da. Right. Oh, okay. Just, just, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see what else is going on. Okay, Shizumaru says is uh, I'm all over it. Bangi, Shizumaru is my nickname for a very long time. Using my my one using it as my one man band. Keep it going. Oh yeah, definitely, man. I've been keeping this going since uh, last year. At MCO. This is already episode eighteen, and uh, across my whole YouTube channel, there's probably like a hundred videos already. Uh, thanks for for thanks for joining in, man. You want to leave your? Uh, do you want to leave? Uh, feel free to leave your a link to your stuff and your and your work inside the the, uh, the chat section, you know. And I will definitely go and check it out, man. Sound familiar though, Shizumaru? I've, have we chat or messaged or something before? Okay, Shizumaru says has a, a question here. Any tips on mixing orchestral compositions with metal? Any tips, ah? Uh? Let me try and think. Uh, did I ever do something like that? A little bit more symphonic. Mm, let's see. Do I have that on this channel? Okay, I'm. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Um, but okay. Any tips on mixing orchestral composition? Uh, he, my tip. Okay. Uh, as I would say. Okay. Let me just bounce this out first. 
Okay, let's go with the second one. Uh. Hang on a second. Uh. Let me just get this out of the way. Doubler. So now we are going to go with plus 9, minus 9. Now, this vocal thickening trick actually... Actually, what the it's trying to do is it's actually trying to replicate one of the um, one of the settings that's inside you know the uh, even tight uh, harmonizer, which is a uh, old hardware uh, effects uh, um, device, right? It's an effects unit, so it's a very unique one of the unique settings that it has. Uh, so this is just kind of the long-winded way of doing it, like, right? That's the only way to kind of reproduce that similar kind of effect, right? But inside a DAW. You can, of course, use it, do it using stock plugins as well in the video, which I demonstrate. You can, you can go check it out. Uh, it is, again, on the YouTube channel. I already did a whole tutorial of how you can do this vocal thickening trick just using stock plugins, okay? Because you can use chorus, you can use a um, combination of delay, you can use, you know, some other plugins that... that uh, um, that may may come along like similar plugins that may come bundled with your DAW. You, it's just a matter of just replicating the process. That's all. Okay. So, all right. So, um, you are saying okay. Uh, da, 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 right. Oh, you're both in the KMR, so must be somewhere in in the KMR lah, right? KMR uh, FB group. Okay. Well, if you want to uh, head on down, you can also join in the Mixstream group as well. Okay, this is the channel for for the Mixstream community. Everything is down in the description. Okay, so anyway, back to your question. Um, really, when it comes to um, combining orchestral with metal or any kind of a hard or heavier uh, styles of music, it really boils down to the boss to the arrangement more more often than not really it's that i think i've repeated often enough to say that mixing 60 to 70 percent of mixing has got to do with two things arrangement and choice of sounds it's got nothing to do with the tools or the tips or the tricks or what plugins you use or what techniques 60 to 70 percent boils down to that arrangement and you know um uh, arrangement and choice of sounds so obviously if you are combining your right orchestral right orchestral music has got a very very wide dynamic range and wide frequency response so um, and when it comes to metal and heavy styles right it has its own uh, uh it sits within its own frequency range frequency homes so your arrangement needs to make space it's all about making space for both um, for for both elements as well, uh, you will need ideally right, and you will need to understand first of all both styles because they are both polar opposites of of uh, each other. Your orchestral arrangement needs to work. Your note choices, your arrangements, your choice of your harmonizations. Um, maybe when it comes to orchestral, uh, um, to more uh, rock and more orchestral stuff. Instead of using very very rich, you you want to avoid you know rich voicings. Um, you you want to go with something a little bit more simple, maybe more unisons. Use octaves, and if you any sort of harmonies as well, maybe if you want to give you a more rock feel, go for fifths or fourths instead of uh, thirds. Thirds will always you know, thirds will always end up sounding a little bit sweet. So, um. You know, that's probably the only best tip I can think of right now, right? It's just make sure the, the arrangement complements each other. Um, very often, you know, when you when it comes to, oh, we try to in introduce orchestral uh, elements, what we end up is that, you know, um, we... Um, sometimes some of the, the arrangers, the string arrangers that uh, that I've encountered on, on, on projects, they try to be too ambitious, they kind of want to show off their arrangement chops and arrangement skills. What happens that it just, you know, muddies up and it just clutters the entire arrangement, which ends up cluttering the entire mix. So it's really not a mix issue. It's more boils down to the arrangement. What notes you choose. Um, okay, all right. Now, this is not strictly metal, but 
and it's blowing my own horn and tooting my own horn a little bit. But um, if you want to say a combination of um, a heavy style of music, um, you know, I, I, the thing that just comes off that that you know comes off the top of my head is would be my song Mara Bahaya. Okay, so that was very consciously a song production that we wanted to combine, you know, uh, elements of rap rock, um, uh, new metal along with an orchestral arrangement. So you can check it out. Maybe you know, maybe I should do a little kind of a breakdown, um, a video of that. I actually did one with Zach. Zach, I don't know if you're watching this. What happened to that video we did, man? <laughs> We actually shot. We actually shot a video where I actually sat down with Zach. We do where we did a little breakdown of, of the uh the the, the song where I kind of talked about the arrangement, the orchestral stuff, you know, because um the string section, the string arrangement is the riff. It's the main hook and the main riff. It's pretty much unisons. You know, it's it's a lot of unisons. It's a lot of octaves, and only um uh, an introduction of a harmon harmony later on. So that that helps and then um there's um the orchestration section comes in the bridge of the song so if you like to do that you know maybe i'll do a video of that okay in 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 time to come lah okay that's a great idea but thanks anyway for the for the question okay thank you very much all right so moving on okay we are done now with you right uh exporting the double tracks hopefully that answers your question okay uh, da, 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 da. okay. So we have these. What we're gonna do with these double tracks is we're gonna blend it in with the lead vocal. So let's remember to turn on the stereo bus plugins again. Okay. Now let me just solo the all these double tracks so they can sort of hear the effect that I'm going for. <laughs> See, it's like it, it's very chorusy, very, very swirly, swirly, and also wide. It's very, very wide. So I'm going to add this and blend this into the main vocal, okay? So here we go. Okay, let's do a little quick link. Is this going to the lead vocal? Oh, it's not. That's why you're not hearing the same. Okay, let's try that again. Let's bring it down. There we go. Okay, I'll probably add more or subtract depending on how um, depending on how it goes. Now for all these double tracks, we don't need all the top end, don't need all the bottom end, so we're gonna gonna sort of high pass and low pass all the vida. Okay, a little bit of that upper mid at 1k. Don't need that. And about 4K, let's take that out. Let's replicate this. Let's duplicate, copy these settings over to the rest of the tracks. And let's link them together. Voila, okay. So here we go. So right, this first half of um, what I'm doing, um, previously I explained before I was doing the vocal thing in the trick, has got all got to do with the corrective processing, you know, taking out all the ugly spots and the ugly warts and the unevenness. Now we're going to go into the creative side. So creative processing, okay, actually let me just bring the uh, groups down so it's easier to see, so I don't have to navigate back and forth. There we go, there we go. So it's all the lead vocals. Even though it's on this track, I'm sending it to another group. So first things first, okay, let's compress a little bit more. So I'm going to run this to my favorite, which is the 1176. 
Lovely. Ketika ini. Okay, you right? Just makes it sounds a bit more forward to to me, even though vo- vo- volume wise may sound the same, but it just you know um, running to eleven seventy six gives it you know the uh, especially the revision A again adds a little bit more of a harmonics to it. So I'm using the eleven seventy six more of a tone, more of a tone, a control rather than than a dynamic control because again velvet is a fantastic singer she's a fantastic vocalist sounds great already off the bat without having to do do so much so this is just to sort of add you know a little bit more to it okay now next thing that we'll do is i actually go back over here to an eq uh again great vocal i really don't feel i need to do much except for maybe just add a little bit more of body a little bit of bottom end so her vocals already have got a lot of great presence and upper mid range to it. Just to add a bit of fatness to the, to, to the low lower register. That's it. Okay, let's go creative now. Let's go with a little bit of effects. First thing I'm going to put up here would be... Alright. Uh, okay, let's wait quickly first. Susan Marma said, Okay, JD, I've got to go. I'm not that young anymore. <laughs> You're not that young anymore. Come on, man. Alright. Uh, I'm not that young either, okay? So, alright. Uh, yep, if you've been awake for a long time, go ahead and get your rest, okay? Take care. Sayonara to you. Thanks again for... Jumping in and saying hi, okay? All right, uh, I'll definitely say hi a little bit more to you in the, when I see you again in the Facebook forums. Lah. All right, thanks again for, for joining in, okay? Take care. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is let's add a little bit of uh, Super Tap. Super Tap is actually a two-tap delay. So what this is, is just going to place... It's going to ask if I'm going to place the vocal inside a nice kind of a sounding room. I just want to add a little bit of space to it. Okay, a little bit of depth. Okay, you can hear. This is, of course, a little bit exaggerated, so I do need to back it off a little bit. Yeah, so you can sort of hear it's a little bit more 3D instead of just being there. Right, you can hear a little bit more of a front and back and side to side to the vocal as well. Okay, so now just gonna add a mono delay. So this mono delay is just again gonna give a bit more depth and space front to back now. Okay, let's apply a bit of ducking so that it's going to duck. Uh, so the delay only comes out when the vocal is not, when the signal is not present. In this case, the vocal. The guitar could go a little bit higher. Okay, let's go back to this. Okay, now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of reverb. So what I'm going to use here is the UAT, UAD, this is the EMT-140 plate. Now, let me put this to the alto preset. Let me just EQ, adjust EQ a little bit. Uh, I want to check the de- the pre-delay. So what I need to do first of all is I'm actually going to use a snare to sort of determine my pre-de- pre-delay value. So 
here's what I'm trying to do, okay? I'm trying to get the pre-delay so that it uh, kind of a, uh, comes in like a quarter note. So you almost like a kind of a slap back. Okay, right. So I've set that time. Right, so that's where, you know, having drums or so can be, ha can be handy to help you set your delay time, you see. Now I'm going to blend it in. Blend this reverb in. It's not a drum source. Probably bring this down to maybe 8K just to darken it a little bit and uh, lift it up to 500. Very nice. I think I want to bring the feedback a little bit higher on the mono delay. now just a little bit of de -esser at the end because again when you add a little bit all that processing it's going to add a little bit of um, it's going to bring up all of these S's as well so just a little bit let's go again Very nice, okay. So let's go on with Vocal Rider. So, um, I didn't use Bass Rider, right, in this project because it's it doesn't need it, okay? Uh, but Vocal Rider is, again, one of those plugins where it will... It's as if, you know, you have someone who is very quickly adjusting the vocal, right? Um, uh, very, very quickly, even faster than any human can react. And it's different from compression, okay? So this will set it. So this is set to smooth right. I brought the range a little bit up, a little bit further. And so response is slow, okay? So set it to a slow response and let's look for the target level. All right, let's see. Okay, I need to compensate down, output. Let's set it around that first. Oh, this is this is just so awesome to work with with great uh, vocalists and great singers, man. Okay, so I'm gonna set the um, delay time for a stereo delay soon. So this is gonna, you can guess it, it's gonna come in during the choruses. Lah. So again, with mixing, I want to build, we, we want to build dynamics. We want to push the listener forward. We want to maintain and keep their attention. Okay, and the best way of doing so is by having dynamics, by pushing the music and pushing the listener forward. So we're gonna do this. Um, so now, for example, in the verses, you have more of a mono delay, okay? Then when you get to the chorus, I'm going to spread it upon and wider to become a stereo delay. So the vocal becomes bigger, becomes wider, you know, becomes a little bit more exciting, a little bit more motion. So same thing, let's bring the ducking down. But this ducking, I probably bring it down to about 10 dB instead. And let's see how it sounds, okay? Nice. 
nice spread. Okay, now, so for the left, I've set it to quarter notes, but the right, I've set it to dotted quarters. So what's going to happen is that the length is going to be different. So the dotted one will definitely, okay, will end a little bit later. It's going to be longer. So what I need to do is sort of compensate, make sure that the feedback on the quarter one is a little bit higher. Because you don't want the delays to be tailing off to one side. You kind of want both to, to be tailing off together. So let's check it out and see. Check it out again. Okay, that's pretty much all right, right? So you see this is about 34% and the other ones add about 25-26%. Okay, so this is only going to come in. Let's automate it. So this first verse, second verse, it's going to come in on this little pre-chorus section. One, two, three, four. See, so it gives it that spacey, airy feel to this section anyway. And I have it running when it gets to the chorus as well. Going into the chorus. Okay, so the stereo delay cuts out when he gets back to this verse and then when he comes back in vocal just sounds so awesome it's like i i feel like i don't want to ruin it by adding adding anything well just let me just try and see how does a velvet's vocal sound with the new fresh air from a slate digital okay so this one is quite quite new it's a fairly new plugin and i'm waiting for it to load what is that okay and Hi, Zai. Sorry, guys. All right. Uh, hello, Zai. Thanks for joining the live stream, man. Um, and uh, by, by the way, if um, uh, if I miss out what's going on in the chat, I'm, I'm uh, sorry because I'm kind of focusing on the mix itself. So sometimes I will miss it. Hey, Zai. All right. Hope you are doing fine. Well, I was just going to ask Suda Makan ke belum. <laughs> but I just realized that it's actually now like, you know, eleven twenty. So, um, Zai, where are you watching from? Uh, where, where are you from? All right. So, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, all right, please leave them down below. Okay. And please, if you haven't done so, go on and uh, do become a subscriber. Click on the subscribe button. Okay. You will really, really appreciate. I would really, really appreciate it. Okay. So let's check it out and see what would, what would adding this do. Okay. 
go to the start. such a nice that's a nice she do it I love it man I mean this this is a brand new plugin that's 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 come out from uh, uh, slate digital what fresh air actually is doing is actually it's um it's uh, emulating uh, the Adobe uh, a noise reduction system right so it's based on expansion so they found out that you know if you kind of if they kind of modified the Adobe A process, you can use it to add a little bit of the high end in. So this is actually used for noise reduction in the past, but you know uh, they have um, Slate Digital has kind of reintroduced this and um, uh, this process in this plugin uh, called Fresh Air. This is really 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 great. You know I've been using it quite a bit on the vocals end, and uh, it has helped lah. You know. Um, sometimes with some vocals, that's all you need. You just need to bring out a little bit that that presence, and it does something different from EQ. It's very very different. So Zai says you are from Bintulu, Sarawak. Hello, man. All right, how's everything going on over there? Hope you stay safe. Okay, all right. Let me know. You know, uh, what 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 do you do? Are you working ke student ke? Are you musician? You play music. You know, for most people, 90, 99% of the people who come on my channel anyway, you know, are either people who are uh, musicians, people who are interested in recording, home recording, and, and all of that. So anyway, let's go back to that. Okay, so that is really, really nice, man. Really, really nice. So let's, again, set and forget. Let's make sure I don't do too much, Okay. I think I want to put the fresh air before the deesser, so let's bring the deesser here, okay? Because it does add, it makes a little bit of those consonants a little bit too spiky, so let's put the deesser in. Okay, cool. Nice. Definitely space for vocal delay. Okay, so when it gets to the chorus, I think I got to automate it a bit. Maybe about half dB. Just a half dB will do, okay? Now, what I'm showing you guys here, this is all just broad brush strokes. Very, very rough brush strokes. Later on, when I go into the automation uh, uh, side of side of things, right, I'm going to be a lot more detailed when it comes to the, the vocal automation. Uh, but I don't show it here because it takes fair time. It takes a long time. And if you're going to be watching me doing all that automation, it's very boring, okay? So I usually will do this later at the end of the stream, at a, at a different uh, session, okay? Nice, okay? That's what we need. So moving on, again, for me, vocals are pre predominant. So I kind of always skip on all the other instrumentation parts, all these synths and pads. I want to make sure that the vocal is nice. It sits in, sits in well, sits in nice and upfront and clear before moving on. Okay, so let's go with the BVs right now. So right, we've got to cut a number of BVs. Same, all right. I have the same uh, 
um, tape and console emulation plugins in here. So let's just start with BV1. Let's go with the first layer. Take out all the bottom. A bit of... Yeah, about 560. It's a bit of honkiness there, the nasal honkiness. Take out the top end. We don't need all that top end. For about 4.4k, just a little notch of the harshness. So let's copy this over because this is actually a double track part. So this is kind of the mid harmony. So let's check it out, okay? Okay, once again, let me just bring the group down so it's easier to see. Just a tiny touch, maybe at 13 instead. It's like a fraction of a dB down. Very cool. Let's move on right now. So this would be BV3. So this is, if I'm not mistaken, is the high BV. Six forty around there. Let's bring chat that out a little bit. Four point six K. Alright, okay. So Zai says, right, just starting into home recording, currently using GarageBand. So is it necessary to invest? Okay, Zai's got a question. Is it necessary to invest in a more high-end DAW? I'm worried that it might be overwhelming. Now, um, okay. Use whatever you have, man, right now. Okay, if you are just getting into it, so GarageBand, okay, um, is a great introductory tool to uh, get into um, uh, home recording and, and, and music production because it's got all the tools, right, to introduce you to all the basic tools of how to, how to record, how to create music, how to create beats, how to create um, 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 music arrangements. It comes bundled with all the samples. Take, take it easy, just start with something slow, you know, try and master and, and make the most of it. GarageBand has got pretty, pretty good sounds, you know, some pretty good samples. Um, recording and mixing, it and, and it's more about finding the right sounds and knowing how to put together uh, instead of, you know, all these mixing ticks and trips and EQ and compression and whatnot. We, once you get, and I've asked and I've, um, you know, Previously, just now, another question was the same thing as well. It's more of getting your getting your sounds, your initial choice of sounds right, and it makes everything later on down the line, you know, downstream, the process of mixing so much better. It doesn't work. It's not the other way around. You can't start with sounds which don't sound right, don't sound good, and then try to use mixing to try and fix it to make better in the end you're just you know um um, um you are with the the expression is polishing a third line you know it doesn't sound good all all mixing is does is it tries to salvage it to try and make it acceptable and make it sound better so all right my advice to you if you're just starting out like this just use whatever daw that you have all right, in this instance, GarageBand. In fact, I used to work with a you know some songwriters and producers who do stuff on GarageBand only, you know, and and uh, um, maybe eventually later on down the year, later on down the line, they move on to something a little bit more um, more full full function lah, like a uh, Logic or in this case, I'm using here Cubase. You see, 
So just start with whatever you do and just start doing music, man. Don't 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 let anything be an obstacle. Don't let gear, don't let equipment be an obstacle to prevent you from making music. Hopefully, right? We'll hear some music from you. Thanks again, right? Thanks for watching this this live stream. Okay? This is a this is something I do every week. Been doing this since 2020 last year. I get a lot of other stuff on my uh, channel as well. Um, if you want to uh, in fact, if, if you want to recommend, it's kind of see how the entire process of um, uh, a music production process would go. I have the Direct Access Music Production Workshop. It's a workshop that I do every year. But uh, last year in 2020, I recorded it. I recorded the footage from the workshop and I put it up all on my YouTube channel right here. There's a playlist. Go and check it out. All right, Direct Access uh, 1.0 2020. Check it out. So everything from start to finish, that workshop uh, content is there. La. So there's combination of some classroom instruction and also uh, um, live demonstrations, recording sessions. So you can get to watch right, how it's being done inside the studio. Okay? Hopefully you'll find that useful and helpful. Okay, now moving on. Let's go on with BV3. So this is the higher harmony part. Let's copy it over. So for high harmonies, right, I love to spread it left, right to give it, you know, added width. Let's blend that in. Probably will need to DS the VVs because they're getting a little bit spiky, right? So this is the low harmony. A bit of build up at about 400, but that's normal. That's a, don't need all the top end. Okay, that's it. I think the, the top range here, the 3-4K is not an issue because it's a lower register, is it? Okay, so the lower one, I will tuck it and bring it a little bit more towards the middle. So it's 50-50 instead. So again, this is more width because low frequencies tend to be a bit more omnidirectional. If you spread the lows, it actually kind of makes your mix sound a little bit more narrow. So keep your lows a little bit more focused. The lower frequencies more focused towards the center. Right, spread the highs further out, okay? There we go. Okay, so now, first of all, I have my TDR Nova again. Let's high pass. Let's filter out all the bottom end. Okay, now, so I, because the, these are all stacked vocals, sometimes there will be a little bit of uh, resonance because that's sometimes the characteristic of the mic. Whenever you stack vocal parts, bear in mind, eh, right, whatever em frequencies that is being emphasized by either the room or maybe the voice or maybe the microphone itself, you know, it builds up. So sometimes you have to compensate for that when you are stacking vocals. So let's listen for it. And so there's this. Just under 1K around there. At about 960, 970 hertz. So let's bring the gain down. And let's go. Let's engage the dynamic EQ mode. Okay. Let's go to wide band. Ratio 3. Fastest attack, fastest release. Let's go. So, so, so every time that frequency, you know, um, that frequency range um, builds up, every time you have a little build up of energy at that frequency, right, the dynamic EQ will tuck it down a little bit. So it's super, super transparent. Okay, so it doesn't act when it's not needed. So it will only interact and, you know, apply a little bit of the cut or the boost when the frequency or resonance builds up there. Okay. All right. So... A slight bit. Okay. 
around the region of 4.5k i will have this one a little bit more wider queue same setting wide band slightly wider queue this is very gentle though Okay, very nice. Now a de-esser. Okay. De-esser, de-esser. Where we go? Here we go. The de-esser. Let's go with the female S. Okay. Okay, just to kind of catch all the S's, the T's and all that, right? Because all the sibilance. Again, when you stack... All these kind of things all add up. Then last but not least, FG2A, right. Ever since it's come out, I've used the, the LA2A, you know, the UAD plugin less and less because it sounds just amazing, man. Okay. Okay, just a touch. Yep, that's all we need. That's all we need. So this is going to be sent to... Stereo delay, the same stereo delay that I've used. Okay, now a tiny, a very, very tiny dip again at 3K. Right, this is to give space for the lead vocal. Gain up a little. Okay, all right. So now there's actually one more part here. This is actually kind of a mid range, mid range harmony, also, I think. Yeah, this is actually kind of a unison to the BV1 and 2. So I think we can just use the same settings. Let's just copy it over. Oh, but I don't want to link it. Lah. That's the thing. I don't want it to link. So let me unlink this group first. Just make sure that it's the same. Now we link it back. Okay, there we go. Right, because I want to balance it separately. I want to have the flexibility to be able to balance it differently. Okay, let's blend it in. Still a little bit spiky, especially on some of the, the consonants. This one, I'll need to go, all right? Let's listen back. I'll show you where I mean, huh? Especially on the inda, the D. Okay, so what I'm going to need is I'm probably going to need to go in and sort of do a little bit of, you see, these little transits here. I'll sort of need to do a little bit of editing to sort of trim it off. La. So instead of trying to apply so much plugins, if I DS, 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 I might make the vocal sound too dull, right? So instead, sometimes editing will do, but I'll do this kind of cleaning up a little later on, not now, okay? Okay, it's not a huge deal, but it, uh, it does kind of bug me and bother me a little bit. La. Okay, let's move on. Let's go into the chorus, first of all. Okay, so we have this additional layer here. Let's check it out. Okay. Let's get rid. There's a bit of honkiness here. About 700. Four point two K, let's bring it down. Okay, 
Okay, very cool. So it's pretty much the same. These are pretty much, I think, quad track harmonies actually, which is cool, all right? It gives a very, very thick, dense uh, um, VV. <laughs> And hey, who's there? Afik! Afik! Hi Afik! How's it going? Thanks for joining in, man. <laughs> and Afik says, right? Afik says, I used GarageBand back then and now I'm using Logic Pro X. Yeah, so you know, uh, Afik actually, right? Disclaimer, Afik is actually one of uh, uh, the uh, uh, freelance, he's a freelance producer. Amazing, great guitarist, musician, and so music teacher yourself. So if you want, actually, right, Zion, if you want the, uh, if you want someone to, uh, you know, um, guide you, you know, if you want someone to help help you out, uh, you can get in touch with Afik. Okay, uh, Afik uh, also does a lot of his production. He brings does a lot of his projects right here in Studio Two One Zero Five right here, and he used to be one of my former interns. Okay, so <laughs> and now look look where he is right now. So Avik also says it's great for songwriting too. So yeah, again, right? Don't don't let don't let uh, don't don't let whatever software, whatever gear that you're using hold you back. So right. Uh, so Zai says I put some of my work in Spotify under the name Pablo. Okay, Pablo. Okay, cool. Right. But still very amateur. Also, I've seen most of the songwriters to start with GarageBand will eventually agree to Logic Pro. Similar, similar layout. Now, okay, yeah. Um, uh, first of all, obviously, now if you are in a, uh, if you are using GarageBand, it's pretty obvious that you are a Mac user, like that you are someone who is you know, um, comfortable and really comfortable in a Mac environment. So it's actually a very natural progression. They've designed it in such a way that, you know, in Apple ecosystem, that from progressing from GarageBand, moving on to Logic, which is the full-fledged, more pro the, the professional uh, DAW software, will feel very natural because the layout, I think the GUI is very, very similar, okay? So it's very easy for someone to transition from GarageBand into Logic. La. And Logic is is a great choice. It's one of, if not one of the best choices for music creation out there. I don't think it's not that great for recording and mixing, but you know, again, that's my opinion anyway, but it's it's hard to beat when it comes to, uh, for music creation, la, okay? So, all right. So, yep. And Zai says, wow, okay. <laughs> yep, ala ala biasa je. But GarageBand, Afik also says, GarageBand is a great songwriting tool. Yep, it is. That's why it's so, so, so popular. And so, for, for uh, you know, it's easy to use, easy to learn, get you, get your grips around, you know, uh, DAW environment. Then once you're ready to move on, then you, right, move on and um, tra transit and transition over to something like Logic or Cubase or Pro Tools or what whatsoever, lah. Okay? Right, so that's the BVs done. Okay, let's go on now. Let's add back. Let's go back into now. Once I've established the vocal and the main rhythm section, the drums, the bass, the, the main rhythm uh, um, instruments, then only will I add in some of the additional uh, stuff. This is to make sure that whenever I in the mix, whatever that you do, whatever you add, is to support the vocal. That's very important. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go with. Let's check out this uh, one that's called. Autumn Haze. Okay, let's check out this. Okay, these are mostly all pads. So, pads are very, very simple. Nothing much that needs to be done, actually. Very interesting. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a bit of multiband. Okay, so what this multiband compressor is going to do is I'm going to uh, do what we call an upward compress compression, similar to what MV2 is doing. 
But what this is gonna do is kind of just give a more. Let's see which one would be a better frequency range. Uh, okay, this one. This more, more slightly more wider, wider band here. This is again just to sort of even everything out, not do anything super drastic to, to it. Okay, again because a lot of program sounds has been already been chosen by the arranger and the producer. There's no real need to mess around with it. There's no real need to um alter or significantly alter the sound. Maybe all you need to do is just high pass out some of the lows just and low pass some of the highs and and that's it. And just blend it in and balance. Don't don't do too much, okay? Don't don't have to do too much to to um to sort of force things to fit in together. So let's just blend this in. Let's start with this. I might bring the kick down a little bit actually. Down by 1 dB. Let's go on with the next one. So this one is called Space Time Keys. Interesting. Starts with like a pad first. Right, okay, this one has more. Okay, it's got some of these um, ringing notes at about 1.5k. Just maybe just EQ it out a little bit. Okay, this one, I know what I'm going to do. This one will be MV2. Okay, because this kind of these chords are kind of just like um they're punctuating on every single chord change. So you know it's kind of playing the chords. Uh what I want is I want to really enhance that sustain. So this is where MV2 is great, right? So bringing up the low level, it's there to enhance the sustain as well. So it's longer sustain. Compensate. Let's bring the output down 2 dB. Now let's blend it in. Okay, this little stick intro, I pr probably want to... Let's turn the stick down a little bit. Let's bring it down by a couple of dB. 6 dB. Yeah, about 6 dB. Back to the key. Tricky. Because I want this to at least give a little bit of push on every downbeat, you see. Yeah, you know? May have to automate some of this. Okay, now the next thing that comes in is actually is this little uh, anthem hook synth. So let's take a look at that first. So it is coming on second verse. Let's see what it does. 
Okay, so this is more like an arpeggiator kind of a synth. Okay, this will benefit from uh, some kind of compression. Okay, and uh, in fact, let's go with let's go with FG2A. It really, really works real well on the keyboards and guitars and similar sounding stuff. Okay, that's a bit too much. So let's. Let's bring out some of the upper mids. Get a bit of motion. Very nice. Okay, let's move it on right now. Bell strings. Let's add this in. Okay, yep. So this is much more like bellish, obviously. <laughs> then it kind of morphs into more of a regular pad. Okay. This one, I think I will go with the C4 as well. Same thing. Let's go with the Opto. Let's go with the Opto string just to gently massage the frequencies. This one, again, is not, not doing too much. Just, again, more of a texture. Let's go with let's check out what ambient waves is. Okay, alright, so this one is more of a swell and it builds up. Okay, Nothing much needs to be done to all these synths, man. Just a bit of high passing. But what I will do is gonna add in a bit of stereo widening to this. And there are many tools I could use, but I'm gonna use this one. This is Ozone's Imager. Just to give it a bit of widening. So let's solo. So all of the pads and keyboards are being sent to this group. Just wanna push a little bit more out of phase to the speakers. Now, uh, you guys sh will kind of only hear this if you're listening on uh, either earphones, a good pair of earphones or good monitor speakers. La. If you're listening to this on a uh, on a uh, mobile device, you're probably not going to hear it that much, okay? All right. Let's see. Da -da -da -da. Zen, uh, Zai said, okay. I searched for this channel when I found out that Bunkface recorded their EP at 2105. Hey, yes, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yep, I recorded uh, recorded and mixed Bunkface. Is mixing a rock song a different approach to the other genres? Uh, da, 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 if so, what's the most important aspect that we need to focus on? Alright, okay. Afik PB, subscribe to your channel also. Yeah, need to learn more from Chico Afik. Yay, Chico Afik! So, uh, hope you're hope 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 you're going okay. Mixing rock, um, you can check out okay, right? I've done a lot of rock stuff as well. Uh, previously, this is obviously a um a, a pop project that I'm mixing right now, but uh, pop punk, yeah, I've done honest mistake, airwaves on fire, uh, swerve, I've, I've, and uh, and some other uh, um mixture. Uh, um, episodes of Mixstream, quite a number of them do uh, focus on more rock genres as well. 
And really, honestly, my approach and my workflow is pretty much the same. I focus again on the, the obviously a lot more emphasis, obviously, when you talk about drums, uh, when you talk about rock on the drums and the electric guitar. Lah. But I will always kind of start whenever I have the rhythm section out of the way. I will always kind of leave out the all the side, the, the fills, the lead parts. I leave it for later. I try to bring in the vocal as early as possible. To me, I think this approach works regardless of, of genre. You know, it's more all it's all determined by the song actually what it needs. But very very common, whether it be rock or pop or anything, you know, whatever needs to be in focus needs to be in focus lah. So most of the time, all right. Uh, if you want something that's a little bit more commercially viable, vocals, right? So vocals is very, very important. So anyway, here we go. Just this, just to spread out the pads a little bit wider, give it a little bit more stereo width. Okay, very cool. Where is that coming from? Oh. Okay, so those high frequency um, is coming from the space time keys. Very, very cool. Right, again, this one, I think the space time keys tracks I will need to automate because some chords are a little bit soft, sound a little bit like here now, a little bit loud, but I kind of roughly set a balance first. Lah. Okay. So now it's going to the second verse. Interesting little line here. <laughs> so it's got a little kind of a little lick, like a little lead line by this uh, keyboard here. What I'm going to do, let's solo this first. Okay, all right. Let's check it out. This one, I will bring in the LA3A just to compress it a little bit. Just to make sure all the notes pop out. A little bit more EQ on that. Just give it a bit of a nose, you know, a little bit of a spike to that. Kind of, I want to position it to the left, just give it a bit of uh, its own space here. Okay, let me just change it into a combination panner because that moment, because this will allow me to more precisely put the uh, the part inside a um, inside the stereo field. That's better. Very nice, okay? So, time to bring in the loops. So, 
the uh, all these loops kind of come in at the very last chorus. Again, we're building up to you know a big big uh, finale. So let's check it out. This little loop, very cool. Don't need all the bottom end. So let's take out all the bottom end. And what I love with all these kind of loops is to just to drive it. So let's go with the smasher. Just to smash it. Bypass. Take a bit more of the bottom end, cause what I want is more of the top end uh, motion going on. You see. Okay, let's play around with it. I think it probably needs a bit of modulation, some kind of um, uh, phaser to give it a little bit of motion. I think it would probably be a flanger. There we go. Let's bring the mix down. Blend. Let's turn out the vocals first just to see how it blends in. There you go. But we could do more with the mix now. Listening. Yeah, thirty-five percent. I think could be more once I put the vocals in. Something interesting is happening here. Something is distorting. Or is it the sound itself? Oh, I think the sound itself has a bit of distortion in it. Which is cool. I'll live with it. It's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Okay, let's go on with loop 2. Let's check out loop 2. Actually, it's actually the same. Ah, okay. I know what, what I, I I remember what uh, Velvet told me. Really. Some of the loops were actually duplicated. But I think this is actually useful because what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to use this and filter out and just use this as a bottom. Put a bit of bottom in. Okay, just blend it in. See? Take out all the, the, the top. Let's 
somewhere about 100. Just blend it in. Just to give it a bit of, just to add in that little bit of, because uh, the flanger kind of takes away a little bit of that low end. So now I want to reintroduce this with this uh, loop, just to blend. Sweet, very, very sweet, okay? A couple more, just a few more tracks. I think these bell strings can kind of go down a little bit more. Especially at the top end, we don't really need. Eight hundred hertz. Scoop it out a little bit. Okay, let's go with Scarlet. What is Scarlet? Right. Just like a little synth line. Okay, so. What I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to put on the Distressor. Where's the FG Stress? And then there's one little setting here which is cool for leads. So let's just see how it goes. Compress it a little bit more. Okay, so same thing, maybe let's put this over to... Let's check for sir, what's these Hollywood strings for? Okay, those are, those, are, those are regular strings. So if that's the case, the Scarlet should go to the right. Right, okay. I'm going to play around. We need to do a lot of automation later on with the synths, especially at this end part. Some of these layers need to be brought down and taken down, right? Because this is to give space to the synth lines here. Okay, a bit of EQ just to push it a little bit forward. Okay, some of these pads, let's take out a bit of 3K. Almost there, okay. Hollywood strings. Let's go with Hollywood strings now. So Hollywood strings. Uh, this is a string patch, yeah, which I like to use. So with strings, we gotta filter out the bottom again. Okay, it's got. Annoying 2.5K range. And we can actually chuck in, let's chuck in the, just needs a bit of reverb to it. All right, here we go. Let me load the, I have a little preset already for strings. Okay, I'll leave 2A. It's a tiny touch. A very, very, just barely moving the needle. 
Turn on the reverb. Okay, filter out 125 hertz. And let's check out the strings. There's actually a lot of stuff going on here, man. There's actually quite a lot of stuff that, that's happening. So a lot of automation is going to need to take place. But again, I'm kind of showing you all the broad strokes first. And uh, we're almost there, actually. So just a little synth at the end, okay? This little uh, cool little thing is kind of like traveling to space. That's kind of the whole idea of the song anyway, right? The whole thing is feels like you did, you're kind of flying to space. So let's just bring this in. I'll fade that out and I should probably add a bit of e a reverb to that. Let's go with a let's go with a reverb which has got more let's see. Let's look for it. Do I have it here? Let's go with the Kill Hearts reverb. There we go. Simple normal regular reverb with no fancy uh no fancy GUI. Okay. Hello. Where is it? There we go. Let's check it out. Let's put reverb to it. Let's make it wide. Let's yeah, let's just make it insanely wide, man. Here we go. Yeah, let's check it out and see. Very cool. <laughs> when I first started out, when I first heard it, you know, it was like weird. So I kind of uh, messaged Velvet about it. It's like, yeah, it's meant to be there. So it's cool, you know. I mean, that's kind of the, the idea and impression that we want to have. Lah. So we just fade this little thing out. Now, sweet. That pretty much, you know, um, this, I would consider this as, right, the first draft of the mix. Well, I'm pretty happy with with where where it is. Maybe what I, what I want to do very quickly now is to go and take a take a take a uh, listen to this whole thing. All right, um, on my second set of speakers, which are the Yamaha NS10. So just a second. All right. Okay, I already turned them on. So let me just switch it on over on the mixer. Now this is just to, for me to get a second um, uh, look for a different kind of a reference, frame of reference. Switching over from the big speakers, now I'm switching over to the smaller Yamaha NS10s. Like, they should be able to tell me a little bit more, especially when it regards to the, the vocal. So just take a listen in a moment, let's check uh, what, what are we saying here in the chat, okay? Right. Hey, we have another one watching. We have Easy Studio 21. Oh, is it Ez? Ez Studio? Hi Ez, where are you watching it from? Thanks for joining in the uh, live stream, man. Let me know where you are watching from. Thanks for saying hi. Let me grab water as well while we listen to this.
I'll probably take out a little bit more of the boxiness on the kick actually. the bass sounds here especially you know with the the, the treatment okay. let's automate the snare down okay, and then when it comes back up two one two Okay, so when the kicks back into the chorus, let's bring the snare back up. Okay, back up to minus nine. Okay, I'm gonna sort of tuck down all of these synths down by about one dB. So. Uh, I would tend to, I want to do it in the group, but let's not be lazy. Let's do it one by one, okay? So let's go here. Let's start with the, this one. One, two, one, two, three. Okay, yeah. Because otherwise it feels like there's way too much going on uh, here. So just bring it down. By about 21. Same thing with all these space time keys, I think. I will have to fine tune the, the automation on all of, of the space time keys. One, two, three. I think this one needs to go down more than uh, more than one dB. This needs to go down by about probably 2 dB, so go down to 18.5. Let's bring the bell strings down as well. One, two, three, four. Okay, so let's turn this down. I can sort of hear it already start to clear up a little bit, you know, just bringing everything down 1 dB, uh, 2 dB here and there really helps to clear it up. And lastly, the ambient waves. One, two, three, four. See, so now I can bring up all the, the lead scenes. Okay, these Hollywood strings, I would want to pan them to the left. And uh, why do I tend to pan the strings to the left, by the way? Because um, the parts are mostly the high strings, so which mainly means violins and maybe some violas, but... Violas, you know, they have to play very high in the register. So in the traditional symphony orchestra, the placement, right, the placement of an orchestra, right, from left to right, 
So if you're watching this, left to right, my left is here, right? Is first violin, second violin, okay? Then the violas, then your cellos, then only your contra contra bass towards the right. So it's the higher frequency, the higher strings are always on the left, okay? And the lower strings are towards the right. So that's kind of the perspective that you want. So that's why I'm panning the Hollywood strings a little bit to the left. That should also give more space again for that lead scene, the scarlet lead scene to come out. Cool. Okay. So again, same thing. I think the chorus need to bump the vocal up just a half a dB. Okay. So it goes up half dB, maybe even one dB, but let's just put a half dB first. Okay. Half dB first. Turn this the low end thing down. It probably doesn't need a boost, I think. I want to give it a little bit more space, I think this would help. Uh, I'm going to put in a put in an EQ and the AMAC EQ200. But one cool thing about this EQ is that it can also run in an MS mode. So that's what I want to do. MS mode here is short for mid-side. So instead of a traditional processing, it's always left and right, right, or dual mono. This is a mid side, so it processes the mid and the sides a little bit differently. Okay, where is MS mode? Let's go into MS mode. Hello, uh, mid side. Okay, so if you will notice, okay, if you will notice what it happens is that see, it changes from left, right to mid and side. So this is what's what's happening. So what I'm going to do with the guitar is I want to try to, you know, just buy MS processing to try and widen it a little bit. So, so I'm going to take out some of the, take out some of the low. And just bring out a little bit of the highs here. Let's go maybe about Let's go with where are we here? Seven K. Bypass. It's very subtle, but it spreads it a little bit wider. Because what I'm doing is I'm only EQing the highs on the side and taking out a little bit of the lows from the from the mid, you see. In fact, I should probably take out a little bit more on there as well. It's taking out some of the highs as well, actually. Da -da -da -da. Let's take out a parameter link. Because we don't want to link the two. Bypass. It's very, very subtle. You can add a bit of stereo width actually. 125% is usually good. Okay, 
yeah, I feel it doesn't clutter in the middle too much. You know, it just clears it up slightly, just very, very tiny, tiny uh, changes uh, uh, like that to the EQ uh, using using mid-side. Okay, very cool. All right. And uh, now I want to revisit now a little bit of my stereo bus processing. Now, I didn't do too much to it because, again, I don't really feel like it needs it. So let's go to the loudest part, which is the very last chorus, because that's where I want to sort of touch. So here, this is wave C4. This is on my stereo bus. So this is on the multi-opto mastering setting. What I'm going to do is just, it's just going to um, kind of massage the frequencies a little bit. Very tiny touch, so there's no frequency that jumps out. See, this is good, very subtle. is barely touching the 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 meter see it's dance barely dancing very cool okay right so now i have here my virtual bus compressors in series so let's bring in the compression let's see Now, FG Grey is an SSL, it's an emulation of the SSL. I'm just going to have it, again, barely moving the meters, okay? Not more than 1 dB. Bypass it. See, it's a huge difference. Everything just sounds a little more forward. Very good. No change there. And one of my latest secret weapons is the uh, SPL Iron. Love using this. So this is again going to be set into an MS mode. Okay, so let's turn off the parameter link, turn off all the uh, volume boosts, and pretty much the way I gain stage the whole mix ready, this is again going to be barely touching it. Half a dB of gain reduction. It just kind of opens up the sound stage a little bit, it just gives a little bit more separation. Because again, this is an MS processing. Okay. Last one, just add this. So I'm just going to run it through here. This is kind of a trick which I learned. The um, <coughs> UAD API 560 is a graphic EQ but not EQing anything at all. It's just running through the circuitry of the 560, okay? Okay, I think this needs to be faded out a little bit earlier. All right, awesome. Okay, uh, just a 
slight tiny touch of automation to the bass. I think I just want to automate the EQ on the bass a little bit. So again, we're talking about dynamics here. I want to sort of build everything up. So dynamics here, the several tools that have gone into it will be the arrangement. See, when it goes into the more dynamic choruses and sections, the percussion, the hi-hat percussion, goes into 16 notes and makes it a little bit more dynamic. Things like the synths, you know, they add, um, the arrangement adds on a slightly a higher register. But once we add on all those top elements as well, mustn't forget, don't ignore the bottom end as well. Okay, so if not, otherwise everything gets brighter, 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 but you know, the bottom end gets neglected. So what I sometimes will do in the choruses, just a very subtle EQ, just to add one dB kind of a shelving here. So let's automate it. Okay. One, two, three, go. This is super, super, super subtle, okay? Just a one dB shelving here, just to kind of lift that bottom end a little tiny bit, okay? It's extremely subtle, right? Okay, so back to the verse, you don't need it. And then, again, last chorus, okay? Super simple. One last trick I want to show you guys, all right? Again, to build dynamics, this is a very common trick. And if you watch my other mixed stream episodes, you already know, already know what I'm gonna do, lah. I'm gonna be automating the stereo bus itself. So, what happens is that very, very commonly, all right, uh, what you can do is you can automate so that every time it kicks into the chorus, you bring up the stereo just by about either half dB or one dB, right? For me, one dB kind of works. Yeah, and let's do it. Okay, here we go. Three, four. Okay, right. Just let me do that automation move and fine tune it. So this will ride up, okay, starting from one bar earlier. So when it kicks in the chorus, again, right, when it kicks in the chorus, it's just that one dB louder to the listener. It sounds more exciting. Everything sounds a little bit bigger, and you're doing it using this trick so that it doesn't sound like it's obviously been turned up, you know. Again, it's a psychoacoustic effect. Our human ears always think that louder sounds better, see. But we're doing it in such a subtle way, in a subtle way that you don't hear that it's obvious. There we go. And then, here we can coming out from here. Okay, coming out from here, chorus, into this verse. Oh. Okay, we need to bring it back down again so that okay, we maintain the same perspective. Lah. Okay, and you can guess it when we get to the last chorus. Ready? Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay, sweet. So this starts about here, zero dB. Okay, that loop. I think I need to take. I need to take away a little bit of the top end of that loop. Yeah, just take away a little bit of that top line. It's got one thing that's kind of piercing sometimes. See what a huge difference that loops make where I mute it. This is without the loop. That adds all that energy, you know. Okay, 
Nice. Okay. I think the vocal might need 1 dB instead of instead of half dB. So just bring it up. So again, all this will be very, very fine-tuned. I will go and fine-tune it uh, later, later on. Uh. So when we fine-tune vocals, right, and when we do all the automation, I need to go line by line, one by one. Okay, every single syllable just to make sure that the vocal stays up front, okay, that no words kind of get lost, it doesn't get buried. So yeah, that pretty much sums up, you know, the the process. I would say this is about 80% of the way there. Um, 80% of 80, sometimes 85%. What we usually do right now is, you know, take a little bit of a break, give the ears a little bit of a break. I'll come back again maybe a couple of hours later usually or sometimes very often the very next day itself to uh, fine-tune a little bit more, okay? So when the ears are a little bit more fresh and I can work on all the automation moves a little bit more uh, in greater detail. So, right. So before I um, sign off, okay, thank you again so much for watching. In the... hey, oh, by the way, right. Amiral Ayman also said the music sounds awesome can't wait to listen to project er's latest song cool i'll tell you i'll talk a little bit more about that on another video okay you probably have seen the teaser that i've posted up uh, earlier earlier this afternoon but tonight this is about velvets right velvet adult's brand new single okay so amazing she's an amazing artist amazing talented uh, uh vocalist so stay tuned uh, once it's done, once the final mix is out, I'm sure, right, if you are a fan, if you're following, uh, and if you follow me as well, I will always update and always post and share it when the actual single has been released. But here is kind of a little sneak peek into the mixing process behind the song. And uh, um, before I sign off, we're going to maybe just listen to it one more time um, from start to finish. And... Uh, Hopefully, by the time that this is out, well, I'll keep you up also, lah, definitely, right? So let me just make a start point and the end point first. So I guess that's it. We're gonna, I'm going to wrap it up right now. Thank you very much for watching, all right? Everyone who's been uh, 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 tuning in and watching in this live stream, be it live or maybe if you're watching uh, later on in this replay, thanks for all your questions, guys, all right? Uh, and some of the questions that you've uh, put in. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you found the uh, whole live stream useful and informative, you know, hopefully that... The main reason that I want to do this is kind of want to show the people, I want to show the public the amount, the work that kind of goes in to the music that you love to listen to. There's so much work that goes into the um, the, the creation of, of uh, your favorite songs. And this is only just one small portion, one segment of it. Lah. Right? So if you found it useful, you found it uh, entertaining somewhat, hopefully, right? Uh, hopefully you've learned something from it. Um, do please leave a like, okay? It really, really help out with the YouTube algorithm for the videos and the channel. Uh, do share as well, okay? With your share this if you if you if you if you can. Uh, again, that will really be appreciated. Uh, don't forget also if you haven't done so, please come become a subscriber, okay? Click on the subscribe button and notification bell as well. And um, as I uh, mentioned at the, at the start, if you want to support the channel, um, you can sign up to become a patron, right? The website is a crowdfunding website called Patreon. So the link is up here below. It's also down in the description, the video description. So it's www.patreon.com slash studio2105, okay? Uh, not only that, if you sign up to become a patron, okay? Um, there are a lot of perks and benefits, right? Again, it's all explained and described in the website like, above. Uh, but if you want to support, in particular, this video, uh, the artist, now, if you sign up and if you uh, message me with the code the Mixstream18, Mixstream18, so what I know is that I know that your contribution and your subscription, uh, you want to help to support the, the artist, you see? So, Right. What happens is that 50% of any of the revenues that's generated from this will go to the featured artist. Lah, okay. Right. Uh 50% of course, right, will help right towards the the uh, maintenance and the creation of the content here. So thank you very much. Do consider becoming a patron, okay? Right. So I'm gonna sign off. Let's listen to the track one last time. Right. This is 
right? Mimpi Indah by Velvet Adu. So take care, stay safe, happy recording, mixing, peace, love, music, out. See you next time.